that uh, my client, as the day approaches, uh, is just apprehensive, and we had to talk through some things. Um, Are we ready to get on the record this time? I think so. We still need to sign that. Those other papers. Okay. All right. And so let's get on the record first. All right. Mr. Pate, if you want to stand up there with your client, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, with your attorney. We're on the record in 19 CR 44, Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Jerome T. Pate. Uh, we're here this uh, afternoon. Initially, it was set as a pretrial conference that was continued from a January pretrial conference, the purpose of which was to further address um, pending motions, including motion uh, to transfer venue, and also then to get this matter set for trial. The court has subsequently been advised that uh, the attorneys have uh, negotiated uh, a resolution of this case on guilty plea it is further my understanding that the terms of that plea have been uh, fully discussed uh, with. Uh, is that your phone, Mr. Page? Yes, it is. You need to put it away. Okay. I was just had you a. Need to put it away. Okay. Yeah. It's been fully discussed uh, with uh, the victims in this case, and that uh, the terms have been um, had previously been agreed to by Mr. Pate. At this time, Mr. Vows, does it remain your uh, your client's intent to enter a guilty plea here today? I think you better ask him that question. Mr. Pate, if you'll raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? So, so help you God. Yes, I do. State your name, please. Jerome Todd Pate. And Mr. Pate, what is the last four digits of your social security number? 1120. And what is your date of birth? It's October 15th, 1969. <clears throat> Have you ever been told that you suffer from any mental illness or condition that affects your ability to think or to reason? I've been told that I have PTSD, Are you depression, but not that I am... No, I don't think that I have anything wrong with me at Are this Are you currently time. receiving any treatment for any sort of mental or disorder or condition? Depression, anxiety. Right. Are you currently taking any medication for uh, depression and anxiety? Yes, I am. All right, and have you taken that medication as prescribed? Yes. Are you under the influence of any other drugs or alcohol today? No, ma'am. Have you taken any over-the-counter medication that contains codeine, any histamine, or any other substance that would affect your ability to think clearly? No, ma'am. At this time, is it your desire to change your plea uh, from not guilty to guilty? Do I have to answer that yes or no, or can I make somewhat of a statement? That's that, what is, I... that is a yes or no answer, sir. Will I have the opportunity to say anything further? If you, it is your intention to change your plea from not guilty to guilty, then I will take your plea, and certainly you'll have an opportunity to make any statement that you want to make. But if it is not your intent to enter a guilty plea at this time, then I'm going to set your case for jury trial, and you're going to stop wasting my time and everybody else's time this afternoon. Ma'am, I'm not trying to waste your time. And then is it your intention to enter a guilty plea at this time or not, sir? No. All right. Why Chambers, am I wasting your Mr. time? Mr. Chambers, what is the Commonwealth's position at this time, sir? Your Honor, we would move to revoke the defendant's bond at this time. We, had took, we took part in a lengthy mediation. We agreed to continue this case two months to enter this plea today. Uh, I think we've inconvenienced the entire court system by canceling a pretrial date. Uh, and continuing this matter for two months for him to resign from office, so we'd move to revoke the bond at this time. Right. Mr. Vows, would you like some additional opportunity to meet with your client this afternoon before we proceed at this time? Um, I don't believe it'd do any harm. I'll make it very, very quick. I know we've already delayed the court, and uh, I'll report back within a couple of minutes. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you another 10 minutes with you. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you.
Thank you all. Please be seated. All right. Let's get back on the record and see if we can uh, sort this out. We are back on the record in 19 CR 44. Uh, Mr. Valves, there may have been some misunderstanding with respect to um, on the part of the court uh, with respect to you being ready to proceed. And so the court uh, jumped out here ahead of you uh, this afternoon, and then when we were delayed, uh, uh, I was as perplexed as everyone else was, in term, but perhaps not any more perplexed uh, than you. And so at this juncture, so that the record is clear, I have previously been tendered executed documents by Mr. Pate that uh, have been likewise signed by his attorney and by the Commonwealth. It is my understanding that through uh, felony mediation um, that uh, an agreement was reached, that that agreement was subsequently reviewed with the uh, victims in this uh, case as well, and that the purpose for uh, today's hearing was to enter that plea consistent with those executed documents. Um, perhaps I should have my, directed my questions first at you uh, instead of, of Mr. Pate. Uh, at this point in time, what is Mr. Pate's uh, decision with respect to proceeding forward with entry of his guilty pleas? So I believe he's still under oath, and I believe I'll just let him answer that question if it please the court. All right. So, uh, Mr. Pate, um, uh, what is your position today with respect to entering a guilty plea here consistent with the executed documents that have been tendered to me. Can I say a few things or? Um, uh, I, I need to understand what it is that we're doing here like today, to Mr. Pate. Yes, I had every intention of coming in here today and entering a guilty plea based on the um, based on the mediation that we had. Uh, it's very difficult for me to enter a guilty plea to felony related charges that I've been in law enforcement for 25 years and never have I ever charged someone with felony charges on a situation pertaining to this uh, that was similar to this. If I may interject, just if you intend not to enter a plea, don't say very much about the case because what you say here under oath will be used against you. I'm not trying to tell you not to say whatever it is you need to say, but also want you to remember that if you don't ultimately plead here, whatever you say, I would think that Mr. Chambers will definitely use against you at any further proceedings. Okay? Thank you. I was just getting ready to do that. So right. Sorry, um, I did not mean to interrupt. Mr. Payton. You know, it, it's it's difficult for me to enter a guilty plea um, for a lot of reasons, and I don't want this court to think that I am trying to minimize, take away from, or deflect any responsibility that I had in this situation that occurred. Uh, I do absolutely feel like that because of my bad decisions that this whole case took a turn that it wouldn't have taken had it not been the Breckenridge County Sheriff. It's difficult for me to plead guilty to felony charges where a prosecutor indicts me and immediately after getting an indictment recuses himself and basically testifies at the grand jury to facts that were not at all. And again, if I hadn't did, done what I did and drank and drove on March the 8th, I would not be sitting here nor would anybody else. But I absolutely think I was indicted. That prosecutor said, got my indictment, I will jump out. Then I made an offer 
based on those indictments on a Monday. We send an email back to Mr. Chambers' office to not accept, and two days later I'm indicted for assault first, one that if you're found guilty you spend 85% of. This was never an assault first case, should have never been an assault first case, but it became that, and it became that to push me in a direction to take a plea. I'm willing to take a plea, but I now understand how some people feel. I've defended the court system many, many times and still do, but I feel like I feel like I'm being very much bullied into doing something that's not right. Now the gamble is big. Mr. Chambers wants to go to trial and say, well, let me tell you this, that, and the other, then I'm, I'm risking leaving my family, which I did that March 8th when I drank and drove. Thank God I didn't kill anybody. But I want this court to know, I want the people to know, and I want the public to know that Todd Pate holds himself responsible for everything that he did. But it's hard for me to lay down and plead to felony charges that don't apply. So I think we are back, Mr. Payton, and probably should have, have stayed in the place where we started. Again, I wanted to give you an opportunity to have further discussions with your attorney. Uh, but I and think I'm sorry, ma'am, for no, doing you this. Don't have, I'm sorry for... for what I, I need to... I think we're back to where we were before, is that is it your intention today to enter this guilty plea? And I think we're at a yes or no place at that point. Let me say, let me say, can I say one more thing? I think everybody in this room wants this over with. And if I could address Blake, Blake, I hope you learn from this case. I'm not mad at you. I'm not in any way upset with you. Mr. Pate, not that it we have reached that point now. Okay. It, this is either a yes or no. Are you going to enter your plea or not? <laughs> I guess everybody thinks it's funny. Certainly not the people who I think are, are here with you today, Mr. No, they don't. I've broken everybody's heart. But it's hard for me when I see Mr. Chambers sitting over there smiling. Let me just plea and get it over with for everybody. Plea to something that I absolutely do not feel good about, but I don't want you to try to send me to the penitentiary for years and years. If you can sleep with it, I can sleep with it. Okay. And this is probably I think unusual, we're done. but At let's this do point it. in time, I think we're done. And so let me tell you where I think we are today is that we have executed plea documents. Whether or not Mr. Pate uh, uh, has the right to withdraw the, his plea now that he's executed those plea documents remain to be seen. Um, and at this juncture, this court could not, based on these preliminary statements that Mr. Pate has made, make a finding that this plea is knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently made. Where I think we are today is, is that on the one hand, the Commonwealth can, if chooses to do so, to uh, enforce the terms of this agreement based on the execution. Mr. Pate, I'm talking at this point in time. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. At this point in time, I'm going to sustain the Commonwealth's motion to revoke his bond. He's going to be taken into custody today. We will come back for further hearing as to whether or not to go forward with this plea or to set this case for trial. And I will look at additional, uh, I will look at additional conditions with respect to his bond at that time. He's going to be held without bond uh, based on, at least at this juncture, there having been an executed plea where he was to serve 75 days with credit served. There will not be any arrangements made with respect to house him in Grayson County or anywhere else that he will be taken into the custody uh, and housed in the Breckenridge County Jail. And at that point in time, if the Breckenridge County Jailer wants to make arrangements with another jailer to house him, he can. And then what we will do is we will look at coming back as soon as your respective schedules will permit in order to hear argument on whether this case should proceed forward on resolution of a plea or whether it should proceed forward on resolution for trial, and if by trial, then where that case should be tried. And so, counsel, with respect to your respective schedules, if you will look 
uh, either on Thursday afternoon or Friday of next week. Your Honor, if I may speak to Mr. Chambers' motion to revoke the bond. Um, I've already ruled. I I've already ruled at this point in time. We we're done at this point in time other than setting this for further hearing as to whether or not uh, the Commonwealth can enforce this plea, whether or not the Commonwealth is going to, to choose to withdraw its plea offer, whether or not the Commonwealth can withdraw its plea, and then whether or not Mr. Uh, Mr. Pate can withdraw his plea. But at this point, we've got a fully executed plea document that provided in pertinent part that he was to serve 75 days in jail, and he's going into jail today under the terms of that plea. Whether or not proceed, proceed forward with the court accepting the Commonwealth's offer of pretrial diversion as opposed to rejecting that plea, which would give him the opportunity to then, of course, withdraw his plea, we got a whole lot of things to sort out, and we're not going to sort them out this afternoon. So if you'll look at your calendar and tell me when you can be back here next week, I can be here Thursday afternoon. I can be here any time on Friday. So, as it stands, my wife and I have a trip planned the 19th, which is Thursday, mm -hmm. to the 22nd. We fully expect that there will be, a, it's an F out of the country, and I fully expect that we won't go. But right now, we pay for that trip. All right. I, I will also be available the following week on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Wednesday the 25th works for me, Judge. I do have a trial on the 26th and 27th. I don't know what this, with the, what's going on with the coronavirus, if we actually will call in a jury. But for now, we're set for a jury trial on the 26th and 27th. Okay. So the 25th is wide open. So I can make the 25th work. And, and Your Honor, I I'm sorry. I, I was talking about next week. Next week oh, would be the 18th, 19th, and 20th. I understood Mr. Vows may or may not be out of the country next week but if he's not then i could do it either on uh, the afternoon of the 19th or i could uh, preferably do it on the 20th so i can be here the 18th because i will be yeah. here anyway for yeah but i can't be here on the 18th oh i'm sorry yeah. i, I yeah. misunderstood so, so i can be here on I, I can be here right now i think we probably ought to look at setting this for the 20th that way you're going to know whether you're going to be here or not are you available then as long as it's kind of late in the afternoon, I have a grand jury uh, in Ohio County, which is right next door, so I can hop on over. But I think we'll be done. We're usually done with our grand juries around lunch. So if we go ahead and just set this again for 2 o'clock as we always do? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And I understand that you've ruled, but I believe it's incumbent upon me to make a record on Ms. Mr. Uh, Chambers' motion to revoke the bond. May I do that? Um, I don't believe that it's a basis to revoke a bond because a, because a defendant who has at one time verbally accepted a deal declines to go through with the formal plea colloquy. Um, in fact, it happens quite often. The remedy for that is to set it for a trial as quick as you can. There's no bond condition that says that if a written deal is reached but not followed through with a written plea colloquy, which is the heart and soul of a an actual guilty plea, that that is a basis to revoke the bond. Um, I don't believe uh, that this behavior is contemptuous in any way, um, because I don't believe that my client signed the written, written offer at that time intending to do a disservice to the court. He merely has a change of heart or mind. Um, and for those reasons, I don't believe that a bond revocation is appropriate in this circumstance. I appreciate your position on that, but I want to uh, remind both counsel that I not only have, uh, I I've got signed plea agreements here um, at this juncture. Um, is, is, his bond is revoked at this point in time. We'll determine whether or not this is going to go forward with respect to this plea when we come back. So I want you to understand is that his bond is being revoked 
at this juncture based on him having previously entered into a written plea agreement with the Commonwealth whereby he would be serving 75 days in jail with credit for time served. Um, at this juncture, if he does not go forward with that plea uh, at a later date based on the equivocal uh, position that he's taken today, whether or not the Commonwealth at this point in time, based on um, um, whatever grounds he may assert he wishes to withdraw the plea, in particular with respect to the pretrial diversion offer, then we'll address all of that again when we're back here next week. But at this time, he's in custody uh, uh, um, to be uh, housed at the Bre Breckenridge County Jail with whatever arrangements they choose to make for him. All right. We'll see you back here at 2 o'clock next Friday. Mr. Vows, if your travel plans do go forward, then we'll find another date as soon as you get back. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And so? Or just hand me the right out. Yeah, I do need it. I do need it. Just put me out another one. Mm -hmm. Yes.